Hey everybody, Nick here, and tonight, well, tonight I got something pretty, well, frankly, something that I, I'm, I'm really grateful for. Um, recently, a viewer of mine, a, a, a fan, uh, contacted me and said, Nick, I've got some, I, I've, I'm gonna make a gift box up for you, um, you know, I, what's, what's P.O. box? Like, well, okay, I mean, no, no one is ever required to give me, frankly, anything. I'm mostly here for the passion, although certainly it's nice now that it's not, you know, eating my face financially, but anyways, um, th this, this guy, my buddy Rich, has, uh, sent me a very, very generous care package. I unboxed this, you know, from the bigger box at the post office, but I have not actually ever opened any of these knives yet. And some of these are knives that I, I recognize based on the box. Some of them I have no freaking clue. And so I uh, figured I would go on ahead and do a little bit of live unboxing, take a look at everything that's, uh, that, that, that's available here, and I uh, do it live just, you know, so uh, why the heck not, right? I uh, give my very first impressions on all of these various things that are going on here. And so I've got that. The other thing I have, just as a little bit of a teaser, this was not a donation. This is actually something that I'm uh, checking out for a uh, a pair of buddy of mine, a pair of buddies of mine are actually doing a trade, and they they, they figured since they both trusted me, they you know just use me as a, a an intermediary, and so I figured I'd take a look at this little guy as well. So uh, you know maybe do a comparison video or something like that. But this was not donated to me, uh, and in fact I will be sending it along to its new owner shortly. Uh, but you know I just figured I'd let you know. So anyways, let's go on ahead and start doing a little bit of unboxing here, and then maybe at the end if my uh, if my voice box is still going, we will uh, take a uh, take a short look at uh, well a couple of other Ask the Nick style questions. So um, let's go on ahead and start off with this little guy right here. This right here, I, I don't actually know what this this is. Um, this is Ethan Grow, which is not a brand I have ever freaking heard of. Um, actually, that's not true. I've heard of this brand because these are, this is one of the brands, I think I recall, emailing me, you know, a couple of times for, at 2 a.m., uh, you know, in, well, let's just put it this way. English was not their first language, asking me to do a review. I forget whether they were wanting pay or whatnot. But anyways, um, this was one of the knives that they sent along and uh, was one of the knives, I'm sorry, that my buddy sent along. I don't know if they sent them to him. That'd be kind of weird. But uh, either way, uh, so I'm going to take a look at this little guy right here. This is a weird piece. Okay, um, so I... Is this a friction folder? Maybe this is a friction folder. Um, it's a weird front flipper. But it felt like it locked. Okay, no, it is a friction folder. It's got a lock, uh, like a detent ball in there, but it's it's mostly held. Ooh, that's... Okay, that's certainly a thing. Um, this is an interesting piece. Um, piece of what I'm not 100% sure of, but it's... Uh, it's certainly a piece. No, I mean, look, at some level... Good God, could these edges be any sharper? Okay, um, this is this is a, an oddity. It's thinner behind the edge than most ZTs. That's, that's good, at least. And it's got a spidey hole, although I don't think they're allowed to call it that. Well, this is going to be an interesting piece to take a look at. Centering is... That's some pretty substantial blade play. Okay, well, um, that's a uh, that, that's certainly a knife. Um, but uh, there are some very excellent pieces in here as well. Um, I am well. Okay, interesting. Um, for those of you wondering what's going to go on with these knives, uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at them. I'm going to review them, and then what I'll probably end up doing uh, after the review has aired and after everything is um, said and done, I will either uh, be selling these on Patreon, likely for charity. Or, more specifically, I will be um, doing one of those charity raffle things, because those have been working pretty well. Um, it's a, uh, and, you know, I'd like to do some more good with that. There's another one of those coming up, but I'm really saving up a bunch of prizes, so to speak, for it. Uh, a bunch of donated knives, uh, so that I can really make it very, very, you know, I can have a fully stocked pond, if you will. So there's a lot of motivation for people to donate, because that seems to work a little bit better. So uh, that, that's number one here, your Ethan Grow, Ethan Grow? Is that that's not even a word like Ethan grow like it can even grow open uh, if you use the thumb stud 
Okay, either way. So that's number one here. Number two is from a little company called Spiderco, um, based out of Golden, Colorado, USA, Earth. And uh, let's go on ahead and pop this little guy open here. Whoa! There's a hundred pesa. Okay. Wow. That's a contrast. <laughs> Holy crap. This is actually a brand new knife from Spyderco. Um, I, okay. That's excellent. Um, this is a, um, this is a huge freaking knife. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Holy crap, guys. Um, I, I have only seen pictures of this knife previously and this thing is ginormous. Like a nearly front flipper. Um, and the hundred pacer is named after a snake in Taiwan, I believe. Um, that apparently, if you get uh, bit by it, you're dead within a hundred paces. So that's the hundred pacer. But um, this is a big, big freaking knife. Here it is against your Spyderco Delica. So you can see that this is um, this is this is a big thing. I mean, heck. Is it the case? Yeah, the Spyderco Delica quite nearly fits within the blade of the 100 Pesa. Um, that's that's absolutely a thing. But that said, uh, do I have a piece of paper around here? I, come on, I gotta have paper. Where, where are you coming, paper? Here you go. Here you go, paper. Nice Rhodia dot pad. Here it is, eating the Spyderco Delica. Nice chump juice. Holy crap, that thing slices. Oh, my God. God, guys, this thing is freaking slicey. Oh, wow. Okay, that's why this gets interesting. Oh, wow, because it's got relatively thick blade stock, but it, it's spread over, I mean, it's spread over so freaking thick. Oh, man. Okay. So, aesthetically speaking, I may not entirely understand any aspect of it whatsoever. Um, but, man, does that thing freaking cut. Um, so, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a very interesting thing. Um, so, thank you very much for that, Rich. Um, let's move on to the next one here. I, I got to push through here. Just, you know, I, I got a lot to, to go through here. Uh, let's see here. This is, um, here we go, here we go, here we go. Bam! A Cold Steel Voyager. So, this is actually a knife that I have never... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, people are asking what's steel on the Pacer. Um, this is XHP. C-T-S-X-H-P, right there. Um, so, there you go. Candle looks like it's from Southern Grind. Interesting. Um, so, anyways, next one I'm assuming is a Cold Steel Voyager. That would make sense to be in a Cold Steel Voyager box. But um, I have never actually handled a Cold Steel Voyager before... <laughs> Holy crap, that's a, uh, that's a lot of iron crosses. All right, well, that's a thing. Um, okay, and we are partially serrated here. But look at the freaking, actually, the ergos on this are really surprisingly good. Like, I have relatively small hands, but this is just locking right into them. Certainly doing interesting things to my, uh, my hand there. Must be dehydrated or something, but... Wow, this is really ergonomic. That's actually kind of compelling here in terms of the ergos. Um, interesting, interesting, and then it looks like triad, yeah, yeah, triad. Oh, wow. That's a triad with a, with a spring that doesn't suck. Um, that's kind of nice. Yeah, the serrations are definitely not going to be for everybody, but this is a situation where, uh, you know, a buddy of mine donated it. So, I, you know, this is something I will very happily take a look at. And actually... <laughs> There is a second Voyager in the box here, and I, I don't know whether it is the same or maybe... Oh, God, they're saying extra large. That means it gets bigger. Oh, good God. <laughs> Look at this thing. Holy crap, that's... is hilarious. Okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm struggling to even at the moment. <laughs> so it's got the same thing as the Espada XL where you can choke forward here. You can, actually, you can go all the way up to the edge here. You can hold it and actually, ergonomically speaking, it's doing pretty okay down here. And then down here, holy crap, you, you've got that, the, the, the jackassing grip down here. 
wow. Wow. And it's still got a pocket clip, which is optimistic of it. Hold on, I gotta do a pocket test real quick here. Let's see whether it actually will fit in my pocket. Alrighty. Um, oh, good God, the clip is right on top of this texturing. I literally cannot get that into my pocket because the clip is right on top of this shop stuff right here. That's a... Um, and the clip is like super freaking tight. Okay, can I actually lift this clip off with a pry bar? That's a big question. Okay, yeah, I can. But wow. Okay. This is absolutely a, a jackassing tool. In the same sense that the Espada XL was a quality jackassing tool, I feel like this is as well. But in, frankly, this is perhaps a little bit better. Oh, wow. Hold on. Hold on. I just... <laughs> Look at this clip pattern here. I, I, I saw this clip pattern. I'm like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. A lot of knives have a clip pattern that looks exactly like that. See, right here, you got the triangular clip pattern. Right here, triangular clip pattern. And then I thought about it for a second. <laughs> and then doing it upside down. That's hilarious. Okay. See, this is, this is a knife that's going to have to be used. I'm, I'm afraid that there are going to be proof tests in the future in my life. Oh, good God. That's a thing. Oh, man, is this ever a thing. Thank you, Rich. I'm going to get very, very, very good use out of this little guy here. Um, perhaps not in the classical sense of use, but... Um, like, already, I'm holding it in my hand, and I just want to hear... Ah. I mean, I'm like I'm looking lust. The, the cold steel is is infecting my mind here. Like I'm looking at this water bottle over in the corner here and thinking, oh, man, I bet I could do that. And, like it, it is the, there's the he are temptation. It's 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 acting on me. So before it acts on me fully, I think I better stash this guy away for the moment. But oh, my God, is this going to be a thing? Oh, let me give you a second clip because it's left side because it's an asymmetrical clip. That's awesome. Oh, man. I kind of want to put a clip on both sides just because I think, oh, no, I don't have screws for it. I don't know. That just feels like it would be better. Wow. That's a... Uh... <laughs> That's a thing. Oh, good God, is that a thing? Oh, and of course, size comparison. <laughs> Spider <laughs> coat delica, which is almost as long as the blade. <laughs> okay, that's just a beautiful thing. The screws would run into each other. No, actually, because the screws go into the slicing path here, into the blades path. Oh man, it's got that. Can I even deploy this with a thumb stud? Maybe. Yeah, close enough. It's got a little bit of a hee uh, sort of thing. That's a, uh, oh man, that's a beautiful thing. All righty, thank you. <laughs> okay. Now let's go to something maybe a little less ridiculously huge. Okay, so uh, next up we have another Spyderco. Let's see what we got inside here. Uh, this is an Endura. Okay, this is a DLC Black Endura. Interesting. I didn't even know they made a DLC Black Endura. Then again, I guess I just don't see things. It's like a stealth bomber thing. Like, seriously. Um, that, that, that is freaking stealthy. Like, I put it there, flip it over like no one can see it. Oh, there you go. Um, okay, so cool. We got another really big, ridiculously huge... No oh, combo edge. Nice. You know, actually, this is going to be very handy for me because I have a video coming. Uh, well, uh, no, I don't have a video coming up. Um, actually, um, uh, my buddy. Oh, God. How am I forgetting his name? I got a lot of freaking buddies here. Um, oh, hold on. I got to look this up real quick. It's, it's going to bug me. It's a tip of the tongue sort of thing, you know. It's been a long day, guys. It's been a long freaking day. Actually, um, that's right. My buddy Mike uh, just mentioned to me today that I should do a video contrasting the, the, the pros and the cons of serrated edges and whatnot. The Houdini Endura. <laughs> I can see it. Operation Endura Freedom here. That's a very 
thick. Oh, it's Saber Ground. That's why. That's the other big difference between this guy and your Spydeco Delica here. Um, size comparison, of course. But um, this is a Saber Ground Endura because it's ha it's partially serrated. Um, the blade stock is, well, it's a little thicker on the Endura anyways. But you can see here that the, the grind only comes, well, you could see here if it wasn't stealthy. If it wasn't blending in. Here, now you can see <laughs> that this, uh, that the blade stock only comes to, uh, it comes to full thickness down here rather than up at the top there. So that's a, that's a major difference there. A blackout Endura. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, man, the Stealth Bomber Endura. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let's see what's next in the bag of tricks. There have been a lot of fun little surprises in here. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Okay, next up we have a black box. Not a Stealth Bomber. Well, maybe a Stealth Bomber. I don't know. Uh, let's see what is in... Okay, the black box is sealed. The way is shut. How the heck do you open this thing? Melon. No, that didn't work. All right. Uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, this is a jackassing knife. This is a jackassing knife. And right now, what I am doing here is absolutely... Um, uh, the, 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 I'm opening this box, yes, but I'm opening this box jackassily. <laughs> so, there we go. That's excellent. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's been a long day and I needed this. <laughs> so, okay. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and it matches my rask blue with the hardware. So okay, we got, we got we got a dragon thing going on here. Sea serpent, some variety of something or another here. Oh, with the gold clip, guys. Oh man. J J Hayden Lewis says the Grimsmos have really gone downhill. <laughs> So I'm seeing the dragon here. I'm loving that already. This is great. The thumb stud, the world's longest thumb studs. That that's pretty excellent too. We have ourselves a flip it tab. I'm a little terrified to figure out what we're gonna get when this opens up. But here we go. <laughs> I, okay, hold on, hold on. We need some. We need language help here. I, I need. I, I'm gonna need some people to tell me what this means here. Um, oh, man. Or is that even language? Is that like a thing? Is that like Dragonese or something? The Omega Sea Monster? <laughs> uh, yeah, if somebody can tell me what this... <laughs> people are saying garbage. Um, means USA, jackass. It means crippling depression. <laughs> Picnic table. That says dragon in Chinese. That may be a thing. Um... Scales on the blade, indeed. Oh, God. And they're actually, like, etched in there. That's not just like a... It means they, like, carved this out. They... I don't even want to know. But you can see... A, you can see at the edge of the blade right there. All the little... The, the little cutouts there. So it's kind of like it's serrated, which is excellent. Um, it's got a sharpening choil, which is going to put it ahead of pretty much anything Spyderco makes. Oh, man. And the harpoon up here, because if you got a sea monster, you need a harpoon. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Okay. Usa. Yeah, it's my buddy Usa, of course. A dragon skin mask is slightly different. Um, yeah, this is an Usa design. This is indeed hand <laughs> handcrafted in China. Oh, man. And this is a... Uh, I don't even know what that thing is. Is that like JD? Maybe? Designs? I'm loving the chemming here. Look at this. Okay, guys, right here. We got to have a little chat here. Got to have a little chat. We're, we're going macro here. We're going big. So, right there. Check that out. Um, take a look at the spacing between the E and the S and the D. Uh, that, that's that's a typographical term. It's called kemming. It's when curding goes wrong, so the letters come next to each other. So they didn't even get the freaking typography right here. It needs moisturizer indeed. 
<laughs> I'll take some knife oil and just rub a little bit on there. Maybe it'll help with that little skin care issue. Here we go. Oh, and now it just gets more, uh, more, more, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but it's certainly a thing. Yeah, it doesn't appear to have helped. Oh, uh oh, sorry. Forgot about my macro on there. Oh, man. Okay. This is, oh, Rich, uh, uh, my cup, uh, my cup runneth over. <laughs> okay. And look at this. They've got a little extension on the lock box so you can get to it. Honestly, I wish that were the case. Like half the damn things I've had from Boker in the last two months have been this have been needing that so the leprosy finish indeed oh man okay that was okay um then uh, then now bad bad back on the uh, on a more reasonable run here um we have another spider co um let, let's figure out what we've got in this I, I'm I'm slightly terrified. Let let's figure it out. All right, ready? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And bam! Holy crap! That's a real knife. Oh, it's blue too. Holy crap! This is an S one ten V military, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Freaking look at that! This is Spyderco military in S one ten V steel. This is actually like a a really this is a serious pocket knife here. I um. Wow. Holy crap. This is super, super generous. This is not an inexpensive piece. You say that as if the last one wasn't a real knife. There is a slight contrast here. They're both blue. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anyways, that's beside the point. Uh, this is actually a, a serious pocket knife. CPM S110V is a serious steel. The military is a, a very, very well-known piece in Spydeco's lineup. Ergonomically speaking, it's great. Actually, I have a review of the Spydeco military that I filmed some time back with a loner uh, Jade uh, Jade uh, G10 and M4 uh, version, which Jade G10, yeah, this is way prettier than that. But this is a really nice little piece here. Um, and, and wow, thank you. That's like super generous. And the thing is, it goes nicely. <laughs> you can carry this in one pocket, Voyager in the other. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, I'm getting requests for a size comparison. Here it is against the Cold Steel Voyager. This is going to just... Uh, look, Rich, I, I don't know if you sent these along, hoping for a, for a donation um, uh, for, like, charitable things, but I'm sorry, I won't be able to sell this, this knife. This is... This is a little special. Um, this is going to have to be a... Uh, oh, this is going to have to be a long-term piece. <laughs> All right. Um, and then the Spydeco Delic is around here someplace. Um, yes, you can see this is a substantially larger pocket knife. Wow. Um, that's that's a serious sort of thing. Um, and this is not a PM2, by the way. Um, here it is against the Spydeco PM2. Uh, this is the paramilitary, too. This is for the military. This is the actual military right here. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty serious pocket knife right there. Thank you very much, Rich. Uh, one thing to note, though, that it, unlike the PM2, which is using the Spydeco compression lock, this is a, um, this is a liner lock knife. Oh, man, that action. Dude. Needs oil, though. I hear it already. It's calling out to me, saying, Nick, disassemble me. Nick. Nick. Anyways, people are asking if the voyage is going to be a comparison piece. You know, it may well end up being so. Yes, this is true. Um, th somebody, uh, Tyrex is saying, I never got why the military is tip down only. Um, and also tip down only with a lanyard hole makes no sense to me. I'm with you on the second point there. Absolutely 100%. Tip down only does not make sense with a lanyard hole. But it's tip down only because take a look at this. Actually, here I'll... Uh, this is a uh, flashlight, in case you can't tell. I've had a couple of those on the channel before. But you can see here is that there are liners, but the steel liners... Here, I'll turn that up brighter. There we go. The steel liners only go so far. You can see there's liner, 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 liner. Here there's some skeletonization in the liner. Liner, liner. But the, the liners actually stop approximately here. Um, and so you can see the very end of the line is down there. And so this part is just G10 out at the end here. And so that's why there's no tip-up carry uh, option on this. Is that a good reason? 
No, not particularly. I do prefer a tip-up carry. But this is, uh, th that's why they can't do tip-down. Uh, I'm sorry, that's why they can't do tip-up with the knife as it's currently configured. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Well, thank you, Rich. That's super generous. Um, okay, um, next up, we've got this little guy. This is a Kaiser, apparently. That's all I know. It may be, I don't know what Kaiser it is. Could be Kaiser Soze. I don't know. Be, you know, it's among the usual suspects, you know. Sorry. Um, Kaiser. So, let's see what's coming from Kaiser. Ready? Here we go, here we go, here we go, and bam! Okay, I guess I probably could have guessed that. Um, yeah, Kaiser uses these boxes along with the bag, along with the little... Oh, wow, he even gave me the cloth. Nice. I These are, like, I use these all the damn time. Just, like, constantly. Wipe off camera lenses, things like that. I have, like, a bazillion of them, and I need every one of them. It's like I'll use it, I'll wipe off some ungodly thing from some knife or another and it'll be you know throwing the the, the, the hamper so uh thank you uh all right here we've got a uh, kaiser <laughs> in its little pouch let's see here we go here we go here we go here we go and bam okay oh yes indeed oh ho 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 yep <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, God, I wish I had this around for my knife gripe series. Oh man, I could, this could be, <laughs> this could be an episode. So right here, we've got a, uh, the, the guys, this is a design by DDR. Um, not Dance Dance Revolution, mind you, that's Daryl Ralph design. Uh, although that would technically be DRD. So I don't quite know what the DDR means, but does it say a uh, Daryl Ralph design? Yes, yes, actually. Hold on. We got to go macro on this. Maybe it is Dance Dance Revolution, actually. I don't know his life. All right. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And my God, yes, yes, it does. Come on, focus. Uh, yeah, it says a Daryl Ralph design. Nice. Okay, so apparently DDR is short for Daryl Ralph design, which I'm going to just pretend makes sense. Uh, you have the option for tip up and tip down carry. And, you know, I got to give credit, and they're not going to have the, 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 the pad here. The, it's going to be easy to get into and out of your pocket. Um, that's certainly a thing. Um, actually... It's pretty nice jimping. I haven't seen that kind of jimping coming on a Kaiser yet. Um, the pocket pecker is uh, its like a transparent pocket pecker, which is nice, and also serves as a lanyard hole. Just slide your lanyard material right on through there. Won't really work that well afterwards. But, you know, if you need the knife to partially open from the tip, there you go, case closed. Actually, the action's really good. Uh, it's probably because this flip tab is pretty long and it's positioned well, um, so that that's nice. This texturing is um, sufficient. Let's just put it that way. Um, the uh, <laughs> then then there then there were the fifty holes in the blade. Oh God, those don't even go through. Look at that. The middle ones. I don't think those middle ones go through. Hold on. Where's my flashlight? Come here. I review flashlights, and I can't find the freaking flashlight. Come on, guys. Where you at? Come on. There we are. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's not going through. Okay. That's certainly a thing. <laughs> you could put, like, 12 lanyards on this thing. Indeed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the elusive blade lanyard. Very unusual. Very, very unusual. Um, but some of the holes do go through, so that's good at least. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is perhaps the perfect knife for the Vaseline factory. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to have some fun with this. This may end up being a modern art review, so I appreciate that very much, Rich. All righty. Um, next up, we have a Kershaw. Um, and so uh, this this can be very, very good or very, very... Kershaw. Let's put it that way. So let's see here. We gotta we gotta open this package up and uh 
you know, these can be really difficult. I don't keep very long fingernails or anything. I'm not like a flamenco guitarist or something. So uh, I can't quite get under there. So you, sometimes you need to find a solution. Oh, yeah. And by the way, as I was using that, I just hit my water bottle. So this is just hunting for water bottles. So let's get up underneath here. See, that's the only way to do this. The absolute only way to go about this. All righty. Pop this guy. Problem solved. Oh, I got plenty of problems. That, that ain't just one of them. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. This actually doesn't look like it. What is this? This is a Kershaw, some variety or another. Um, wait, the heck? Is it a speed safe button lock? That is the weirdest thing ever. And there's a hole in the freaking thumb stud. Okay. I'm getting told the Kershaw 3810 dimension. Oh, yeah. Interesting. A speed safe button lock. I wondered. No, because that would make it automatic. But you hit the flip a tab and it just kind of... Oh, man. I think this guy needs some serious love, though. Is there Teflon in there? I'm afraid that there's Teflon in there. Oh, there's just a... Oh, man. Holy crap, this guy needs love. Look at that. Oi, oi, oi. I don't know what Kershaw used to lube this guy, but that's... Uh... <laughs> it's like a butt... So, like, with butt locks, one of the joys is that you can flip the guy... You can flip it back closed using the button lock. Do I have a button lock around here, even? I should. Probably should. Um, but with the speed safe, that ain't gonna happen. So, yeah. Um, the assist... Um, would that work? It really depends on how they've worked, uh, how they've rigged the, the, uh, well, let's see. Is there any actual detent here? No, I think the speed safe may well be the detent. What the heck? There's something going on there. Okay. Either way, it's an interesting piece. I'm wondering, and that's actually, it looks like it's titanium. There's the door for the speed safe on the, okay, interesting. Very smooth. So it's all textured on one side, and then this side is going minimalist. There you go. Disassembly to find out. Oh, it will be disassembled. Rest assured, a button lock speed safe knife is like a, uh, it's like the final, it's the, that's the final boss in knife them. Actually, it's probably not true, unless it's IKBS. In which case, yeah, I can see that. Um, cannot compete with the Sea Dragon, perhaps no. And then finally, finally we have this. <clears throat> so, um... This, my friends, this is a jungly. Um, it's like, for instance, uh, if somebody asks me, hey, hey Nick, uh, what is northern Brazil like? I can just pull out this knife because it's, it's jungly. Eh? Eh? Yeah? No? Okay. <laughs> somebody just said Bruce Lee's younger brother. <laughs> nice. Oh, good God. Um, uh, yeah, this is a wild card indeed. I have never even heard of jungly. And I'm, I'm not really super anticipating a great deal of, uh, of quality here. But who knows? Maybe Jung Lee is a, uh, a custom designer that I, I've never quite heard of. Um, maybe, it's, maybe it's short for Daryl Ralph Design. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, am I sure it's not a box of soap? <laughs> No, I'm not sure. This does have a beauty product look to it. See, okay, here is my conspiracy theory right now. Maybe this knife here is a, maybe, this is not a knife at all, but this, maybe Rich has been made up entirely by people who I've never accepted loaners from in the past. So, Ethan Grow and, and all the makeup companies that keep trying to get me to feature stuff. Yeah, maybe this is an eyebrow palette. I can dress up my hands nicely for Okay. Okay. All right. It's time. Are we ready? All right. Here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And bam. Okay. It has paper in it. My friends, we have a lifetime warranty here. Oh, yeah. 
I'm sorry, I know there's a knife here, but I'm not looking at it because this is just too tantalizing. Thank you for purchasing a jungly. When we set out to design and build our jungly line of knives, we had goals. We had The knife should be built to the finest materials to withstand rigorous use. Okay, we'll see about that. Should be well balanced and fit well within the average person's hands. Well, okay, I'm maybe not average, but we can test this. They should be nice looking, yet be very functional. Okay, we'll, we'll see about that. The knife you hold in your hand today has met all of these requirements. See, they don't know what knife I'm holding in my hand here, guys. This is a dangerous... This is why you need to be careful as you write your... <laughs> as you write your manuals. You are the proud owner of one of the finest quality knives made anywhere. Okay, this is this is serious here. Oh, good Lord. Um, Every jungly knife carries... It. Oh, wow. Frankly, that's... That's a way better warranty than Medford. Um... Oh, it's Aus 8. Fine, uh, right there. Aus 8, that is the, uh, the the finest materials, is Aus 8. So this is apparently a division of... Um... Oh, come on. You're killing me here. Alma. That would have been better with the proper timing. Uh, hardness and blade material comes from carbon content. Oh, 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 guys. Do not disassemble your knife. Comes with a set screw that controls the blade pivot? What? Okay, I'm scared of this. Um, the lubric, not to insult. Oh my God, guys, look at this! Not to insult your intelligence, but please do not use your jungly. Here's a pry bar, screwdriver, hammer, punch, a chisel. Any of these will be considered misuse and void your warranty. <laughs> Knife needs to come with this letter, <laughs> not to insult your intelligence. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I'm finding that as funny as I am. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I've been up since 7 a.m. or something. Oh, oh my god, that's look at this! Holy crap! That's uh, our knives are not made with the intention of harming human beings. If you purchased your jungly with such an intent, please return it immediately for the full refund. This is, this is incredible literature right here. So they're picturing somebody. So Charles Manson goes down to the corner store, picks up a jungly. And of course, because he's reasonable, he takes it out of the box. He reads this. He's like, oh, man, they insulted my intelligence. I got to go kill somebody. And then he reads the back page. He's like, oh, crap. Now I can't. I got to go re get a refund. <laughs> so, I like this. They tell us they're not insulting the intelligence. And then just in case we take offense, they take out a measures. My God, I, look, I don't care what this knife looks like at this point in time. I, I, I have zero, it's almost better if I don't know, but I, this is, right here, this, this book here is worth the price of admission by a mile. All right, Jungly, uh, now that we've had a journey together, let's see what we got here. Okay, oh, wow. Guys, we've heard of USA Design, but look at that. Oh, yeah, that's an USA medallion. Okay, um, so, wow, it's like a half integral thing. So it must be made by Rayot, tip up or tip down. Okay, we're in business here. Half <laughs> serrated venom. Uh, that okay venom i can see that it's a, a very well-known comic book character that's good actually line of lock access is pretty good we are uh looks like we're looking at foster bronze in there which is not a bad thing whatsoever you know what actually ergonomically speaking it's i was gonna say it's not bad then i found the thumb jimping but you know what all told oh it's made in seki city there you go Oh, man. He's using the same upside-down triangle mount as the cold steel, except the cold steel has it off from the side. 
<laughs> oh man. Um, but look at that. This is interesting. This is different. This is like a, a half. They've got an integral backspacer here. That's something you, uh, that, that yeah. Uh, Tashi wants you to pay <laughs> 250 bucks for that from Mass Drop. So, okay, I got a highlight. Uh, right here, the, 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 this manual that was so beautiful is full of lies, unfortunately. Um, ATS-34 on the blade, and uh, on the manual, they were saying that all of their steels are made of RS-8. So, um, yeah, I don't know who to trust anymore. I, uh, I... <laughs> I do not, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a beautiful thing. Now, look, um, somebody just said Lorenzo Sandoval, uh, just said, uh, I can't believe you're trash-talking knives that somebody was nice enough to give you for free. You should be thankful for whoever is nice enough to give them to you for free. So, Lorenzo, I really do want to, that's a very good point. Um, and I want to make very, very clear that, A, I believe that my, that my buddy Rich, who sent these guys along, um, knows that. And in fact, in his, uh, in his email, let me read one of the emails to you that makes me suspect that he, uh, that he knew what he was getting into, so to speak. Um, he said, hi, Nick, glad for the safe arrival. I can never hit any of the live feeds because I mentioned I'd probably inbox live later, but I'll watch later. But I couldn't resist sending that electric blue dragon knife. And mind you, I hadn't opened this, so I didn't know the true beauty here as a possible mate for the Z Hunter. My friend, I, I, I completely understand that I am, I want to be very clear, I am 100% graceful to Rich for sending along some really beautiful knives. The 100 Pacer is a knife I've wanted to pick up for the channel anyways. Um, absolutely, and this guy. I... <laughs> But anyways, I, I, I'd like to believe, though, that my buddy Rich knew when he was sending these guys along that exactly what he was getting into. Um, and, and so I, I believe that he'll understand this video in the spirit it's intended, which is that he's meaning to bring some joy, both in terms of quality and in terms of blue dragons. Let's put it, I hope we see that knife in the new Aquaman movie. <laughs> But anyways, um, this is actually, <laughs> look, this is a knife I've never heard of Jung Lee, and knowing their writing team, I I'm really sad about that fact. But this is a knife I'm going to have to actually legit review, because, look, this rubber is not bad whatsoever. The ergonomics are pretty solid here. It's half serrated, which isn't my bag, but the rest of it is not chisel or anything. I mean, you can tell that somebody actually did give a crap at some stage or another about the construction... Is that a paper washer? I maybe is that a paper washer? That looks like the washer might be paper. I don't know. We're going to find out. Oh, good God, are we going to find out? There's your cliffhanger for the disassembly. What's the washer material? Check next time to find out. Oh, man. But no, I, I, I truly do believe that that Rich was sending this along out of joy, uh, out of desire for joy rather than desire for pay. But um, yeah, warranty void indeed. Yeah, oh, that's right. I can't take it apart because I'm going to void the warranty and the, the lifetime warranty here. Now, okay, here's my question. Let's say that you're, you're carrying the jungly and then you, you, you suddenly find yourself possessed with the desire to harm another human being. Like, I, I haven't had that happen, but like at that point, do you have to like, what do you do? You have to find your local sporting goods store and just, like, turn it over to them and hope that for the best? I mean, how do you handle this? Jung Lee, you're not really being clear about this point. I don't know. I, uh, I just don't know. But okay, we have seen some pretty serious knives tonight. We've seen the Cold Steel Voyager. We've seen this right here. I still want to know what this means, by the way. Like, I want to use the Google Camera Translate app thing. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a beautiful thing. But, um, you know, yeah, that's a... Uh, we've seen some pretty serious pieces tonight. But actually, I have one piece that is also very serious. And we've also seen some very serious pieces. I mean, these are, these are serious knives that are actually very high-quality pieces that I'm very grateful for. But one of the knife that's come across my table this evening is not a jungly, unfortunately. Um, and in fact, I don't know that it's going to have anything interesting whatsoever in the manual. But it is this guy right here. This is a Shirogorov knife. And as a matter of fact, I believe this is a Shirogorov F95. 
This is not donated by my buddy Rich, um, which is just fine. Uh, he, if he has a hero, he's not required to give it to me. Uh, absolutely not. But uh, this was uh, sent to me, like I said, by a, a buddy of mine who uh, is doing a trade, and they figured they would trade through me because I'm a jackass that they both trust, and it's upside down. That's cool. But okay. Um, and so what we have here apparently is a 95 effing... Oh, frag. <laughs> it's an effing 95. <laughs> A 95 frag? Okay. So does that mean they're just going to send me, like, a part of it? Okay. I I, I I digress. We have a serial number. Oh, probably shouldn't show that. And uh, it, it is an MRBS knife. The handle is titanium. The blade is M390 right here. So let's go on ahead and see what we've got under this little guy right here. This is a Shirogorov F95 Monkey Edge Frag Pattern. Oh, M yeah, okay, MEFP. Cool. Let's see how the action is. Holy crap, that's an action. Dude, it's super thin behind the edge. Look at that. Wow. That's an impressive little piece here. Lockup is, yeah, that 10, 15% here. And part of the reason I'm doing this, by the way, is because, like I said, there's a trade going on, and I want to make sure that everybody sees what's going on. So this is actually a really nice little piece here. Oh, look at that. They've even got the screws properly aligned. That's excellent. Got the little bear up here in the corner there. It's uh, practically unbearable. Huh? Huh? If you didn't mill out that little area. Huh? Okay. I digress. Uh, it's got the clip. That's nice. It's the normal Shiro clip. Um, it has a internal lock bar relief. Let's see what the action's. Oh. Okay. <laughs> It's no Cold Steel Voyager, but it'll do. Oh, man. Yes, it will do indeed. Yes, it will do. Man. That's nice. That's a really nice little piece here. Lock bar tension is just like... Super, super light. Hence all the false shutter, dude. Uh, here it is. Let's do a size comparison real quick. Here it is against the uh, Grimsmo Knives Rask. So it's a little bit bigger than the Rask we got going on here. Uh, here it is against, let's do a couple of other higher-end pieces. Here it is against Shirogorov, uh, Shirogorov. Yeah, okay, yeah, the, the Canadian Shirogorov, that is, the Grimsmos, the Grimsmo Norseman here. Here it is against the Elamic Egyptian, uh, right here. Uh, of course, we couldn't do a size comparison without the, uh, Cold Steel Voyage. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Rich. This is gonna be such... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and uh, what else? Do oh, yeah, 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 uh, where are you? Around here someplace is another knife that's actually pretty comparable in a number of ways. Uh, this right here is the Holt Knife Spectre. Um, so, yeah, that's a, uh, that, th there you go. That's the, uh, that's the size of this little guy. Nicely done. Very, very pretty knife. Absolutely 100%. Damn, that action, though. Holy cow. Looks like some internal milling, some considerable internal milling, actually. That's cool. Nice and light. How light is it? I'm going to do a size comparison, by the way, um, of these two. Uh, or, uh, actually, yeah, I might do one of all three. Uh, do, where, where, where'd my freaking grass go? Here we go. I got like a bazillion knives on the table here. Um, too bad you can cut yourself on the Shiro when closed. Let's take a look at that. Thank you, EDC Aaron. So there you go. That's the three of them together. These two are a little bit closer in size than the, the, the F95 there. But, uh, and let's do a weight check here. We're coming in 4.74 ounces on this little guy. Uh, right here is coming in at 3.54. And we're coming in at 3.17. Indeed, the Grimsmos have produced a knife that has shed a lot of freaking weight. Um, I'm hearing that you can cut yourself when closed. Yep, absolutely 100% cut yourself open when closed. Uh, right there, yeah, let's see if we can show that off. Yep, that's a, that's a little bit of a danger zone there, but it is what it is, I suppose. Um, is somebody trying to sell knives in my freaking live stream? Okay, you, my friend, are gone. Yep, adios, goodbye there, spammer. But anyways, this is a, a knife with a hell of an action, absolutely 100%, and, uh, God, it's so freaking thin behind the edge. I, I can't resist. Hopefully my, uh, my buddy will not begrudge me a slight bit of slicing. Oh, man, 
Actually, hold on. We got to have a slice off here. 100 pesa. So it's a slightly toothier edge, so I think it has a slight advantage. And the military, which is also very, very slicey. And the Cold Steel Voyager XL. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't resist. That knife, Rich, if nothing else, this knife is going to bring me an incalculable amount of joy over the next years to come. Oh, man. Um, is this a stone washing I'm being asked? Yeah, I believe so. This is a very, very nice mirror. Uh, not mirror, stone washing. It's kind of mirrory. But it's a high polish on top of a stone. Dr oh, yeah. Um, Shirogorov sounds Russian to me. Expect a visit from Homeland Security. Okay. Come on. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Perfect. It worked. Perfect. All righty. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, um, one of the things that's, uh, speaking of promotion, I think it's just terribly, terribly ugly to promote some kind of a commercial interest in a live stream. I mean, come on. How, how tacky is it to promote a commercial interest on a live stream? I mean, seriously, it's a live stream. If you are promoting commercial interests in live streams, then really, how can you... What left is sacred in the world? Uh, come here. Hold on just a second here. Don't even think twice about what's going on here. It would be a terrible idea to promote a commercial interest in a live stream. Like, for instance, uh, a brand new t-shirt from, uh, from your Nick Shabazz. See, it says, I am Nick Shabazz, complete with the... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Yeah, the comedic timing didn't quite work. Um, but anyways, this guy is available on the Nick Shabazz store. I, I couldn't resist. Um, yeah, you're welcome to wear it, by the way, even if you're not Nick Shabazz. Although technically you are Nick Shabazz, because we are all Nick Shabazz. Me, maybe a little more than some, but yeah. So anyways, this is a very nice Shirogorov, and... Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little look at the, uh, just a wide world of knives from absolutely hilarious to absolutely impressive, um, that I'm really going to get a lot of joy out of both for review and in other cases, just for being, just for being. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Oh, man, thank you very much to my buddy Matt, who sent this little guy along to check out. And thank you so much to my buddy Rich, who did really send along a bevy of interesting knives that'll make for very good reviews, that'll make for very entertaining reviews, and that will, uh, oh, my God, the description for this is still freaking killing me. I can't even freaking imagine. Um, yeah. <laughs> can't even look at this without laughing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Holy crap, 413 people are watching me lose my crap at a knife with a dragon on it. Nice. Just nice. All righty. Um, <laughs> so with that, um, thank you again, Rich, so much. It's super generous of you, and I appreciate it. Um, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and open it up to an Ask the Nick. I mean, clearly I am in a collegial mood, and, you know, <laughs> despite the ridiculousness of the world. Well, what questions do you have for a random jackass here? Um, including, are you Nick Shabazz? Yes, the answer is yes. Um... Let's see here. Blake Anthony asks, my favorite hot sauce. Blake, that's a good question. Um, I'm actually not a, uh, uh, I'm not a huge, like, hot sauce enthusiast. I, and I'm sorry, I, I'm losing subscribers here. I, I know left and right. But, I, you know, I'll do, like, Cholula and that kind of thing. But it, I feel like to a hot sauce enthusiast, and there are people out there who are like, oh, my God, hot saucy. Um, I may be a saucy individual, but I am not a, a saucy food eater. Um, but, you know, like Cholula, your Tabascos, those kinds of things. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan. You know, I don't feel the need to kick it up a notch a bazillion other times there. Um, let's see here. Um, da, 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 da. Would you ever consider reviewing multi-tool EDC? Um, I, I have absolutely reviewed a number of EDC multi-tools, if that's what you're asking. Um, unless you're asking about people who review or who EDC multiple tools, in which case I am currently doing multi-tool EDC. And that I have in my pocket a uh, a pen, 
little guy, Vision Metal Design LP5. I have a pocket knife, which is uh, at the moment a uh, Shirogorov, no, a Sinkovich uh, Atmos uh, done by Kershaw. Um, and I have a watch on my wrist at the moment, the uh, Omega Planet Ocean there. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, but I've also done some multi-tool reviews. I tend to recommend this little guy here. This is the Leatherman Wave. Uh, really, really nice piece. And I think it's kind of the sweet spot in Leatherman's lineup. Mm, pardon me. Too much cheaper, you're really paying a price. And, uh, too much higher up the range and you're really paying a price. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, let's see here. Um... Uh, where are all these knives coming from a magic hat? Um, to the best of my knowledge, my buddy Rich is not the sorting hat from Harry Potter. If he is, actually, that'd be really cool. Um, and I'd be very interested to hear where these knives are from. Slytherin. Actually, probably Slytherin, the one that looks like a snake. Because that, that would make a lot more sense, right? Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, I have no idea. They, they come from my bu uh, my buddy Rich. Uh, so there you go. Um, let's see here. Do I, uh, let's see. Watch the Behind the Gems video. I have them all set up probably. I don't know what you're talking about there. Um, let's see. Uh, Erica Cassio asks, am I a cat guy or a dog guy? Actually, I'm kind of an allergic guy. Um, so I'm not really a big enthusiast of either. I do love cats. I think they're freaking adorable. I do love dogs. I think they're freaking adorable. And, and so at some level, it's probably going to be the case that at some time in my life, we're going to end up with a cat or a dog or something like that. And I'm just going to sniffle through it and life is going to go on. Um, I am a big fan of, uh, you know, if you look at my freaking Instagram, half of it is like famous cats and dogs. Cause you know, you wake up, you see a freaking corgi, your day just got a little better. Let's be real here. Or like little bugs. Little famous internet cat with like 1.5 million followers. Yeah, that kind of, that, that, that'll, anytime I get all, you know, uh, up uh, in myself for the, uh, the, 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 oh, wow, look how many followers I got. Like this freaking cat's got 1.5 million. Shut up, Nick. So anyways, I'm a big fan of Little Bob. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, uh, let's see here. Great question, though. Um, what is my favorite EDC set that I've been using recently? That's a really good question. Um, a couple of the EDC items that I've been loving lately. Uh, where the heck? Oh, it must be in the bedroom. So, um, I, because uh, I keep a lot of my EDC stuff in the bedroom so I can wake up and, well, not up, but I can grab it as I'm getting dressed. But anyways, um, I'm a big fan lately of the, um, uh, the, the Twisby Eco. I got one with a stub nib. It's really incredible. It writes really nicely. I love the stubitude of it um, because you get the nice line variation. It's it's really, really awesome, and it's a pretty excellent sort of thing. Um, so that's been definitely on my mind. Um, in terms of other EDC, I think I mentioned lately um, one knife that I I did EDC the other night just, you know, because I'll switch out some days. This guy's been really growing on me lately. This is the Kershaw Dividend. This is an S35 VN version. But I love this knife a lot, and I think it's a really solid cutting tool. Um, this guy particularly was like 80 bucks or so. Um, I have a full review of the Dividend online, but um, I, I haven't re-reviewed it because this is just the same thing in S35. But it's super thin behind the edge. It's super slicey. It's a great knife. Fits well in the hand. Um, yeah, it's assisted, but no one's perfect. Um, and so, you know, this has been bringing me a lot of joy, and I think it's a really, really solid uh, sort of steel. Uh, and sort of just knife and blade in general. So I think this is a really, really nice piece. Um, and so I think for a lot of people, especially because I know lately I've been doing a lot of reviews of really expensive stuff. Um, and so, you know, it's nice to get something on the channel that's not quite so incredibly absurd. You can get a dividend, just the regular version for like, uh, I want to say like 30 or 35 bucks. So that's not so bad at all. Um, let's see here. Uh, Let's see. Looking for good questions here. What is my favorite steel I'm being asked? Well, okay. The thing is, if I say that, then suddenly the steel people are going to come. There's going to be like somebody is going to blow the little horn like, and suddenly all the steel people are going to rush into the comment thread and just tear me apart for my answer. But I am going to go on ahead and hazard a couple of answers. I can't give one one steel because, um, you know, that, that's really hard to say. They each have different uses. But I've been lately a big fan of a couple of different steels. There is the, 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 the M390 CTS-204P and um, uh, 20CV group. 
Um, they're, they're all basically the same damn steel. They're really, really good. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, chances are for me that they're, they're probably the best choice. Um, I, I, I really do. Oh, my God. Guys, I'm sorry. I have to, I, I need to stop this explanation. We have just witnessed something magical. This knife right here, the Voyager XL. <laughs> Remember I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, well, okay, now it's, God, it's been an hour already, but I mentioned when I first took this out that this knife, holding it in my hand, made me want to slash open a water bottle, right? And that I was eyeing my water bottle carefully. Then a couple of minutes later, I was getting ready to jackassily open this Kershaw box right here. And so I, I, and in the process, I flung this guy open, I popped it out, and I mentioned on the channel that I hit my water bottle. I just look over at my freaking water bottle and it's dripping because look at this. This water bottle was hit by the freaking Voyager. So even despite myself not trying not to slash open a water bottle with this knife, the water bottle managed to get slashed nonetheless. This knife wants nothing but to kill water bottles and it's spectacular. <laughs> despite my best wishes, perform the proof test. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. Let's, uh, let, <laughs> let me see if I can drink some water so it stops bleeding out over my freaking table. Hold on. Okay, chugging complete. I <laughs> finished the answer. <laughs> so the 390 20CV group is great. I'm sorry, guys. It's been a long day. Um, that's pretty excellent. Um, other steels that I really do love, I do love me some M4. I, I think M M4 is a really great steel, and it's a little underappreciated. Yeah, it's not the most stainless thing ever, but it's really, really excellent. And I think it's a great candidate. For, like, for instance, the moment that they make the freaking Shaman in M4, I am going to instantly buy that. Like, I don't care if I have to fly to Golden, Colorado, USA, Earth to get one. I'm going to freaking do it, because that will be an incredible piece. The S30V is not bad, but M4 is just tough. It holds an edge forever. It's really excellent. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely my... Uh, those are probably... The M39... S35 Vienna is pretty close, especially if it's done well, if it's heat-treated very... Uh, if it's made very hard in the heat treatment. Um... Ay ay ay. So uh yeah, that's uh, th that's a that's a good question though. Um and again, steel guys, I'm sorry, you can put down the horn of freaking Gondor a chromium or whatever the horn is. Um and uh, please don't do that. Um let's see here. Uh, what about Benchmade Contigo and M4? Absolutely a great knife. Um the Benchmade Contigo is a knife I never need to own, especially now that I have another pocket sword to use. <laughs> but no, um it is a really great piece for actually getting work done. If somebody came up to me and said, "Nick, I'm going to be on an oil field for the next, like, year and a half. I'm going to be beating the crap out of a knife, and I want one that will hold an edge forever. Benchmade can go on M4, case closed. Just do it. Especially if you got gigantic freaking bear paws. So uh, that, that's, a, that, that's a really great question there. Um, let's see here. Am I going to review the Ruwaiki P801? Uh, let's see here. Is this the P801, or is this the 108? This is the 108. So you got a review of the P108 coming for, for damn sure here, and then I think I've got the 801 around here someplace as well. Although damned if I know where. But either way, yeah, you're going to get a review of both of them Ruikis here soonish. Ay, ay, ay. Um, yeah, and actually, i got to say, Ruiki has been impressing me lately. I've not been a big super enthusiast of a bazillion little Chinese knife-making brands. But Ruwaki, everything I've handled by them has been pretty impressive, and they've dropped some really impressive stuff lately, so... <laughs> you no, know, that is not Rake. Guys, I'm sorry, that is Ruwaki. That's how you spell Ruwaki. How you spell Rake is R-A-K-E. This is Ruwaki. 
Guys, uh, no, it's just not going to happen. Stop trying to make Fetch happen, guys. Just stop. Um, so, yeah, these, uh, these were all donations, along with some other ones. Um, let's see. Thinking about pulling the trigger on the top Scandi folder. What's my thoughts on N690CO? Honestly, N690 is not a steel I'm in love with. I mean, it's okay. It works, but it's not incredible. Sorry, I just looked over at the puddle of water that my freaking water bottle is sitting in. Um, it's not, like, it's not a, a favorite of mine. It's okay, but it's not something I love. So, whatever. Um, but for a Scandi sort of outdoorsy thing, it'll sharpen up nicely, so that that's good. Um, yeah, Voyager versus ZT 0452 CF. Of course, how could I not have made this comparison? The Battle of the Pocket Swords, in which finally the 452 is dwarfed. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Um, size issues aside, would you prefer the ZT 452 CF or the Booze Blade Smoke? Those are very, very different knives, but uh, I happen to have both of them close at hand. So here you go. Here's the ZT. Here's the Booze. Um, for me, personally, the Booze gets pocket time sometimes. The ZT doesn't. But that's just because I'm not a big fan of huge, murdery knives. Except this one. This one this one is close to my heart here. But, uh, yeah, they, they, that's kind of my, that's my feeling there. Um, best Tech Knives, Salmon Lund is asking me about. I had one of them on the table already, the Best Tech Scimitar, uh, Scimitar, that is, which was okay. It was a little pricey for what you were getting, and it looked a whole lot like an Alamic Swish in the body. This guy has just come across my table. This is the, uh, War Wolf. This was sent to me by Frankie and Bird. Um, and, you know, they, they said it was a pretty good knife, and in fact, it kind of is. Um, action-wise, look at this. It's not bad at all. Um, it's got a very nice tent, etc. Yeah, there were some gripes, 100%. Um, but you know what? So far, I'm, I'm, it's it's a reasonably impressive little piece. There are a lot of really great knives, though, in this price range. So uh, keep an eye out for the full review. Don't, you know, run out and get one because I said gem. No, probably not. But that's it. Um, let's see here. Uh, did you buy the Railmaster, asked Sean Ferrier. No, he's asking about the Omega Railmaster. The review of that guy went live on Monday. I did not buy that, uh, that watch, that is. Um, just because, A, it's like five grand, and guys, I can't just drop five grand willy-nilly. Um, it took a whole lot of working myself up to do it once, and I don't know that I'm going to be able to do it again. Uh, let's be real here. Um, uh, well, I am not a strong man. But anyways, and the other thing is it has no date window. If that knife, or if that knife, if that watch had a date window, um, then absolutely, I, I would have considered it more carefully. But as it was, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, best knife to give a kid as a gift. Come on. You know you want to, right? Oh, yeah. This is pretty much the option. That's a really bad option. Do not give that to a child as a gift, unless it's an older child, like, say, about my age, in which case it's a very, very good gift. Um, thank you, Rich. Um, best knife for a child as a gift. Um, at some level, I would recommend this little guy right here. This is the um, Spyderco uh, Dragonfly in uh, S33. Uh, yeah, or, uh, Elm C200N. Uh, either way, this is a, <laughs> it is a knife that is made out of wood. Um, and this is a really good thing for a couple of reasons. A, it's very likely that even a school administrator couldn't get the, well, get themselves all twisted up about this little guy right here. Elma Max. <laughs> nice. Um, but anyways, uh, and it gives them, you know, an opportunity to look at, you know, to understand how a folding knife works. They can do their very first assembly because you have to put it together from a kit. That's a nice little thing. And, you know, it gives them, you know, something to learn, the, you know, the, the, the very basics and whatnot with. Then at that point, once they've carried this guy, once they, they, they love it, then you might consider moving him to a dragonfly. Um, my actual dragonfly here. Come here, dragonfly. And again, in, in this video, Nick Shabazz gives parenting advice when Nick Shabazz is really the last person who should be parenting. And I know that, which is why I'm not planning to. Um, but anyways, why I'm taking active steps not to. But this is a uh, this is the dragonfly, and the reason I like this for uh, for a knife to give to a kid is a couple of things. A, the blade is not very large, uh, which is good. B, it's a backlock. Backlocks are very safe. Um, in general, and, it, it, and it's designed for relatively small hands, which is why I like it so damn much. It must be a birch to put together. <laughs> Nice one. Um, WJ Blocks. But no, and I, and I think it's a very high-quality knife. It'll be all the cutting tool they need for many, many years. So, and it's fully ambidextrous. It fits nicely in small pockets. Look, if you're going to give your kid a knife, this is probably what I'd recommend to you. But mind you, again, do not take parenting advice from me. 
I, 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 I know nothing of this domain. I, I, I know. I just freaking know. But really, yeah, you know the deal. Um, let's see here. A sharpened rock. That's one approach, certainly. Um, let's see here. Uh, Caleb Mills asked, what's my favorite movie? That's a really good question, Caleb. Um, let me think on that one for a second here. I got a couple. I mean, I there, there were a lot of movies that I really do enjoy. Um, but, you know, practically speaking, I would say it's probably Eyes Wide Shut. Uh, this is not a movie intended for children by any freaking stretch of the imagination. This is a, uh, it's aimed at a more adult audience, shall we say. But that said, it is a really, it's a masterwork of cinematography. Um, because, I mean, seriously, look at the details in that freaking film. And I think I've maybe given this rant before. But, like, every lighting color has a specific meaning in it. It's on the basis of a very, very, very weird little novella kind of thing. It's just, it's a really beautiful thing. And I believe it's the very last movie that Stanley Kubrick ever made. Um, Barry Lyndon is another really good choice. Another uh, Stanley Kubrick and a, a more adult friendly, uh, sorry, family friendly, although not super family friendly, actually. No, actually, that's not family friendly at all. Do not listen. Again, do not take parenting advice from Nick Shabazz. Case freaking closed. Anyways, Barry Lyndon's great, too. And I think, yeah, my favorite's probably going to be Eyes Wide Shut. Just a great freaking movie all around. And an interesting meditation on what it means to, to have something be real. The line between reality and fantasy. And whether you actually want to carry that. Um, so, yeah, that's a uh, Nick safe for work movie choices, indeed. Um, so, yeah. Um, also, I'm a Star Wars geek. Let's be real here. So, that's in there as well. Uh, we we got to be real. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just saw Voyager. All righty, moving along. Busca Voyager size comparison. Absolutely, my friend. How could I not offer that to you here? Oh, yeah. Check that out. The Busca does quite nearly fit entirely within the, uh, the, 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 the blade of this knife. That's a completely nuts thing. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, we've got some pseudoscience being spread in the chat room. I uh, keep on with that. Um, am I a beer guy or a wine guy? No, I'm not actually. I, uh, I, not, not to go too specific, but I got some family history, so I've elected just to stay away from that whole world. Um, it probably makes me a lot less fun at parties, but it definitely makes me, uh, a lot less vulnerable to some really unfortunate stuff. But hey, if that's your shtick, then have fun with it. Um, I'm a root beer guy, 100%. Big, big fan of the freaking root beer. Um, let's see here, uh... Uh, gonna try this question one last time. You get $100 to make an everyday carry. WJ Blocks asks that. Um, look, WJ, that's a great question, and that's one of the videos that I really want to make. I want to do a, you know, Nick Shabazz recommended EDC at certain price points. Like, what is the best everyday carry selection of tools that you can get for under 50 bucks, for under 100 bucks, for under 200 bucks? But the thing is, this is also one of those videos that I will struggle to find the chance to make because I always have more stuff on my table that I need to review, that I want to talk about, that I want to show off, etc. And so I, uh, I I look forward to doing that, but it's just going to be a little while. So uh, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a thing. So uh, Delica 4 for less than a $100 knife? Kruger Bud actually... He's saying that, and the answer to that is actually no longer the case. The Delica 4 is a very, very excellent knife. But the thing is, this is now a $75 knife. And if you are going under $100, I think for most people at this point, I would actually recommend the FRN Chaparral instead. Which, again, size comparison against the Cold Steel Voyager XLE. <laughs> Okay, okay, I digress. Um, I think for most people, this is going to be a better knife. Is It's in better steel. The fit and finish is a little bit better. You get a much more compact size, much thinner, etc. For a lot of folks, this is a beautiful thing. So, uh, yeah. Or the Ontario Rat 2 and a solid watch. That's another option as well. It's a great freaking knife as well, by the way. Um, has the Kaiser Beg Lighter moved up since the Delica price raise? Um, a little bit, yeah, and they've now released one with a satin blade rather than painted, which is a beautiful thing as well. But anyways, um, <laughs> guys, 
All right, it's been uh, it's been seventy three. Holy crap, it's been seventy three minutes. Um, so I think I better wrap uh, wrap some things up here. Um, I hope you all have found this entertaining and interesting. I uh, am very very grateful to my buddy Rich for sending along this bounty of knives, both terrible and wonderful. Um, and oh my god. Oh, my God. And we've now seen the Voyager with such a thirst for water bottles that it, it, it took mine out on its own. I hope that you've all found this interesting and that you've had yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your evening. <laughs> Have a good one, everybody. Bye now.